I try to keep my opinions to myself on this channel, but if there's one thing I want to tear down and destroy, it's flashbacks. And that's why today I'm going to devote the entire video to helping you eliminate them from your stories. What's up guys, my name is Brandon McNulty. I'm a writer, I'm the author of Bad Parts, and welcome to my writing channel. Today we're gonna to discuss the subject of flashbacks, and specifically how to avoid them, how to get them out of your stories. This came as a request from one of my subscribers, and it's something I'm very passionate about because I just happen to hate flashbacks. So today I wanna to focus on giving you tips that'll help you work around them and find alternatives when it comes to conveying backstory. Now my first tip for today is to exclude as much backstory from your main story as possible. Now here's the thing with this, a lot of writers they will come into writing a draft with the mindset of how do I include as much backstory and as much backstory specifics as possible. But this is a terrible mindset, you should do the opposite. Instead of thinking about what to include, you should be trying to exclude as much as possible. And the problem is that a lot of writers get attached to their backstory, they spend all all this time writing up character histories and world histories and all these different things that they think that the audience needs them and wants them but most of the time the audience just wants little snippets my number two tip instead of using flashbacks use something else like dialogue to express backstory now dialogue is kind of the low-hanging fruit here if you're not going to use a flashback which is the most obvious way to show backstory you're probably going to have the backstory come out in a character's conversation or maybe an interrogation an argument maybe somebody just yells out details about the past or, or a revelation about something that happened years ago. But I, I think this is something that can work as long as you don't overdo it. My number three tip, character thoughts on the fly. And it's very important that you stick to the on the fly part. A lot of writers will get tempted to have character thoughts as a means of just dumping exposition. You don't want to info dump with your character's thoughts. Instead, what you want to do is just drop little ideas of what they are thinking about the world and how it connects to their past. My number four tip, show your characters being fearful. Fear is a great way to express backstory because fears always connect back to the past. There's always an origin of why a character is fearful of something. For instance, you can have characters who freak out whenever they hear loud noises. For instance, maybe there's fireworks going on down the street and as soon as they hear this loud booming noise, the character freaks out. And your readers, what they might infer from this, they might infer that your character served in the military where there was situations where it was life and death if they heard loud noises because those loud noises were gun shots. So for instance, if you have these situations where you, you show your characters, you know, you show them their fears being triggered by some kind of noise or some kind of situation or some kind of person who arrives, you can express a, an idea that there is something in their backstory that is looming over them. My number five tip, show your character standing up for someone. And this is something that can not only bring up backstory, but it can also make your character more likable in the eyes of your audience. So definitely consider this one. But let's say, for example, we have a group of gossiping housewives and they're all talking about their husbands. And all of a sudden, one of the housewives, she brags about how she's cheating on her husband and she's gonna keep doing it and she's real smug about it. Then you have your main character just rip that lady a new one and tell her off and tell her that she should shut that shit down and just never do it again. That would be an example of a character, you know, standing up for someone else. And as a result of that, we would kind of infer that that character probably was either cheated on themselves or maybe they had someone they, they were close to who got cheated on. We get a sense of, okay, there's something in their history that led them to take that stand and tell off that lady. Another example of this would be, let's say we have a teacher who, you know, maybe has a zero tolerance policy for bullying. And if she sees one of her students even making like the slightest joke about another one of her students, she she will instantly shut that down and you know give them extra homework or something like that. We could probably infer from that that somewhere in that teacher's backstory maybe she was bullied or she had someone she cared about who got bullied a lot. So anytime you can have a character standing up for something whether it's a belief or, or, or another person that's often a great opportunity to signal something about their backstory. And then my sixth and final tip is to use characters careers and major goals to signal backstory. Now I'm sure you all know somebody who who pursued a career path because of something that happened to them in the past. And let's say you have a character who is a medical researcher and they're working like crazy to find that cancer cure. There's a good chance that that person lost somebody to cancer or another disease in the past. 
Alternatively, you might have a character who is constantly making donations to cancer research. And you could just pretty much assume, if you're the reader, that that person lost somebody to cancer as well. So anytime you can use character goals or their, their careers or their vocations or anything like that, always keep that in mind that it's something that could potentially signal backstory. So I hope this helps. The important thing to remember is that when you're including backstory, you don't need to use flashbacks. There are plenty of alternatives to doing this. Things like dialogue or character thoughts or character behaviors. There are plenty of fresh ideas that you can come up with to express what happened to characters in the past. And remember that you don't always have to give the specifics of what happened. Sometimes it's just enough that we have a shadow looming over those characters and we wonder what happened to them and what made them who they are. Question of the day, how many flashbacks are there in your current work in progress, and how are you going to get rid of them? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to check out my other videos. Hit the like and subscribe buttons for me. Share this video with a friend if you don't mind. Pick up a copy of Bad Parts if you haven't already. And as always, remember to keep on writing.